completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 37, making the phosphor bronze die block for the screw reverser and machining the drop arm into which the part fits. The reversing shaft is fitted with four drop arms, three operate the expansion links, the drop arm that I'm holding in my hand is the one that is moved by the screw reverser and in turn moves the other drop arms to move the expansion links. You should get the idea by the end of this episode. Over now to my Boxford lathe and I'm machining a die block from a piece of phosphor bronze and unfortunately the piece of phosphor bronze is far too big so I'm having to remove quite a lot of metal, very wasteful but this was the smallest piece I had. I have lots of smaller pieces of brass but brass is not good for this job. Please remember that brass is not a good bearing material. If I made this part from brass it wouldn't be as strong and the part of it that I will be threading would wear out rapidly. In this clip I'm just checking how much of this I need to machine to fit in this hole in the drop arm. Not forgetting to leave enough to part off the piece. Now all I have to do is reduce the diameter of this piece of phosphor bronze until it fits quite tightly in the hole in the drop arm. Here's a bit of my normal unorthodox engineering. Instead of using a micrometer, I'm just taking a wild guess at the diameter of the centre part and then trying the drop arm in place. And when the drop arm fits on this and it's nice and tight, then I will machine it all the way down. And that's about it. All I have to do now, without adjusting the tool, is run it all the way down and the part will be a perfect diameter to fit in the drop arm. Frequently, I get comments from YouTube viewers the comments vary from being good to bad. There are a lot of haters out there which I do find a bit of a puzzle. But I do get comments from people who seem to think it's a good idea to tell me how to do it and give me lots of tips. There's nothing wrong with that but I would suggest that they make their own video on the subject. And while on the subject of tips, here's a top one. Because it's top tip time. Once I'd turned the diameter of the piece of phosphor bronze to what I needed it to be, I scribed a line on the side of the work, as you can see here. And why did I do that? Uh, please don't write in to tell me. I did it because very shortly, once I parted off the die block, I will be drilling a hole, and I want the hole to go exactly through the middle of it. If this cross hole is in the wrong place, the job will be spoilt. This is the parting off operation. This phosphor bronze is the free machining stuff, and it parts off beautifully. The red phosphor bronze is another story. I picked up the piece from the chip tray and put it back in the chuck to clean up the other end and I would just like to show you something. In this clip, my cutting tool is above centre height. You may be wondering why this is as the tool is clearly mounted in a holder which in turn is fitted into a quick change tool post. The reason for this is on this particular holder I never got round to tightening the screw on the top of it which holds the tool in the correct position. Here I've set the tool in the correct position, or possibly slightly below the centre height, and now the strange dome on the end of the work has disappeared. This clip shows the test fit of the die block in the drop arm, and yes, it's a very good fit. All I need to do now is remove the die block from the drop arm, drill a tapping size hole through the centre of it, and thread it 3 16 Whitworth. As you can see, I held the die block in the machine vise in my drilling machine, and you can't really see it in this clip, but the line is uppermost. I used a centre drill on the line, drilled it tapping size, and here I'm threading the hole. And it is exactly in the middle of the block. Once I'd threaded the hole, it was time to put it all together. Here's the drop arm. And here's a shot of the 24 threads per inch tap, clearly right in the centre of the die block. Please don't be misled by this clip. The die block is exactly the same thickness as the drop arm. In fact, I had to tap it into the drop arm with a soft hammer. In effect, I was using the drop arm to deburr the die block, removing the burrs caused by the drilling and threading operations. The reversing screw screws into the die block all the way through, which is good because there's only a 3 16 of an inch diameter hole in it at the moment. But at least this verifies that the hole in the die block is definitely in the centre. What I'm going to do though is elongate this hole and the way I'm going to do that is to use a 3 16 of an inch diameter end mill and here I'm adjusting the position of the milling table until the cutter just falls into the hole then I know it's in the middle and I can start the machining process. 
I'm a bit concerned that the milling cutter may wobble about, so I'm taking very fine cuts. If it comes out slightly oversized, that's a good thing, because from an appearance point of view, the slot needs to be a little bit wider than 3 16 To allow this drop arm to move a considerable distance when it's fitted in place, this slot needs to be quite long. As you look at this image, at the left hand side there's plenty of metal to cut at, but at the right hand side there isn't much at all. So I've been very careful with the cutter and I decided to finish it off with needle files. And in the end, after rubbing the part on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper on a mahogany block, I gently tapped the die block into the finished component. And here are the parts ready to fit to the engine. There are a couple of things that I want to do to make sure that this part does not bind. I radius the inside ends like this as you can see, and this was done using my bench mounted Proxon motor tool with a small grinder in it. This is just a bit of a precaution because I do not want the shaft to bind against the edges of the slot in the drop arm. And now when I do a quick test with the angles they seem to be about right. It's nearly time to do the first assembly of the reversing gear on the engine, so I'm refitting the handwheel, not forgetting the bearing block that screws to one of the columns, and that's it. In the next episode I'll put it all together and see what it's like. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.